Allow me please to just look uh, back for a little bit uh, to 2023 and then look forward with the perspective perspective of confidence based on what you have achieved in in 2023 you know with the uh, chinese gdp uh, as you mentioned before uh, reaching 5.2% in 2023 actually the projection what well, projection was as if i re recall correctly 3.1% uh, so it's uh, it's a considerable increase above that then there's very strong uh, growth uh, occurred in uh, several sectors, which uh, indicates that uh, China is fully recovered after uh, COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. And uh, and an inflation of 0.2%, I mean, this is probably worldwide the lowest inflation. Uh, mm -hmm. This I have never seen that such such a figure. Now, now to your actual question, looking forward to mm -hmm. 2024, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, China's extraordinary performance in 2023, a 5% uh, growth uh, forecast, I think, is more than justified. Uh, China's projected growth may even be stronger, as uh, China, in many ways, compensating for Europe's and the US's decline. Uh, Chinese merchandise and food will be more than welcome in the West. I'm, I'm sure about that. And yet another reason for China's uh, socioeconomic uh, prosperity to uh, to come is the ever forward moving Belt and Road. You know, I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of the Belt and Road and have always been and continue to be, which is uh, from my point of view, the one economic development initiative that spans the world and spans the world peacefully and the West is silent about it. You know, they know why. They don't like it. Uh, uh, they would even sanction Western countries taking part in it, as you know, like Italy. Uh, finally, uh, another Chinese initiative, uh, the world's largest free trade agreement, the, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, the, the RESEP, is an engine for growth. Uh, and it's expanding rapidly which not only contributes to China's growth, but also to uh, to a decreasing China's dependency on the West. I would say in conclusion, the 5% projected growth for 2024 is a well-justified forecast, mm -hmm. probably quite conservative, uh, okay. since there is also the expansion of the BRICS that will mm -hmm. have an impact on, on China's and, and Russia's uh, growth potential as trade will expand within the BRICS. Yes, I think there's going to be political pressure from the West uh, that continues, okay. uh, de depending, of course, who will become the next president. I think the US will most likely continue using Taiwan to provoke oh. and deviate uh, China's attention from their mainland and international cooperation objectives, but not successfully, because oh. The U.S. does not dare risking a hot war over, a, despite recent uh, election results in, in, in Taiwan, a majority uh, of, of Taiwanese would like to accelerate formal integration into, uh, into mainland China because of security. On the other hand, uh, China is pursuing a defense strategy of peace, really, and China has actually never been, and there's no reason to even assume um, an expansionist countries like uh, like the U.S. or the other other countries. It's a peaceful country. Instead, uh, China will take a path of peaceful development, uh, which is uh, quite different from the approaches of some Western countries, particularly the U.S., which is still uh, adamant in pursuing global hegemony despite its ever more visible downfall. You know, this is also not deniable. Now, uh, could this open, peaceful approach to international, to internal as well as international development pose a challenge to China's growth targets? 
I don't think so. Uh, we know and see it almost on a daily basis how Western wannabe powers, meaning especially uh, Europe, are uh, repeating sanction programs against um, Russia and against China just because Washington wants it, not because necessarily they benefit from it. The contrary, actually, they suffer a lot uh, from them, but uh, they follow still the dictate of Washington. But with China's rapid uh, decoupling from the US dollar, these sanctions will be largely uh, meaningless. A domestic challenge, uh, to get back to the challenges, uh, may be keeping China's national debt uh, within the 3% ratio of GDP. It, it's possible, but I mean, I, I see it a little bit as a challenge. Challenge, Given the fabulous targets uh, uh, Premier Li uh, reported on uh, March 5 to the National People's Congress, and they include like, the creation of 12 million urban jobs, then keeping inflation below 3%, I don't think that's a, that's a problem. I don't really believe that's a, going to be a problem given the two zero point two percent of uh, of 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 these years. So yes, there's a potential maybe uh, of a challenge, but uh, I think uh, with everything else being equal, it's uh, not very significant. I think uh, it's undoubtful. Uh, China has always uh, been open with the rest of the world. Uh, how long will it take for Europe, uh, the peop people of the of the West uh, to wake up will probably be a measure of their suffering under an ever more brutal oppressive dictatorship and uh, and yeah, you know economically both and, and, and socially. So I think definitely China's open arms, as I call it, are mm -hmm. recognized. Uh, it is just a matter of time. Uh, the precursor to this has already been set by President Xi's uh, uh, initiative, the new Silk Road, today called uh, Belt and Road, that spans again Eurasia as a continuous landmass uh, with uh, people naturally trading and working together in peaceful cohabitation. And I think this is the trend. This is going to be the trend for the future, despite the uh, outside propaganda against China. Both mm -hmm. Europe and the US will benefit from an expanding China. They may not mm -hmm. say so, they may not admit it, and the media doesn't talk about it, but that's, mm -hmm. that's going to happen. It's already happening today. China's opening up, as we mentioned before, you know, this policy is likely increasing foreign investments in China, uh, mainly probably from the US and from Europe. Despite uh, everything, you know, they, they say one thing and do another thing that we know already. In summary, I think uh, China's GDP and related targets will likely result in a in a win-win situation for China and the West, in fact. Well, first, I would, I would say in one word, brilliantly, at, at least un unless uh, something drastic, uh, world destructive will happen. I think uh, it's uh, it, there's no doubt. For me, it's a, a brilliant trajectory forwards, even beyond 2024. The future is in the East, um, and uh, that's where the sun is rising too. I definitely believe that uh, uh, Europe and the European, Asia European supercontinent uh, will, will see the light and, uh, and, and come together again. Mm -hmm.